Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video. So I have not uploaded in at least a week. Um, sorry about that. But um, I will be uploading consistently for the next couple weeks. I have some things planned and this is the first part of a six part series. I will try to divide it up and make it last a bit longer with some uh, other videos thrown in because I know that not everybody likes Skyblock. Today we're going to be doing how to get skill XP. I'm going to be showing you some cheap and reliable methods on how to level up your skills. Let's get into it. So, some very easy methods on how to uh, gather XP. Obviously minions are quite a good way, especially for lower levels. Diamond minions and snow minions are fairly good for uh, mining. Alongside obsidian, obsidian's not bad either. Lapis minions are good for enchanting because you can make uh, XP bottles from enchanted lapis and get some levels that way. Clay is decent for fishing, but it doesn't it gives you barely any, so you'd have to fish a lot as well. If you wanted to not fish but still get the XP, you could place down a couple of fishing minions at decent levels to get that. Okay. I'm going to quickly go over the pets and then go back into other methods besides minions. So here I have th the majority of the skill XP booster pets. So we have Legendary Wolf, which if you look at the bottom ability, boosts your combat XP by 16.8%. That'll obviously decrease or increase depending on the level of your pet, but granted that this one just boosts your combat XP by a good amount which also makes it good for slayers. Silverfish, boosts your mining XP by a certain amount, depending on its level. It does also give you haste 3 at legendary. You only need epic. I suggest having epic at least for the mining XP boost, but the permanent haste 3 is very nice, so I do recommend upgrading it to legendary. Rabbit, you don't have to get to legendary. Epic is fine. Legendary the legendary ability just makes farming minions faster on your island while you're AFKing with it. But since that's unnecessary, you don't have to get it. But as you can see, it's second ability boosts farming XP. Then epic onslaught, again, you don't have to do legendary, but you can. Um, second ability. So unlike the rabbit, the second ability is forging minions work faster on your island. But foraging XP is boosted from any tier. So you could theoretically get a common and still boost foraging XP. It just would not boost nearly as much as an epic. And then guardian. I only have a rare guardian. And it's quite a low level. But it does boost enchanting XP. So I suggest getting one of these. Um, and then there's also the legendary squid pet. Which boosts uh, fishing XP. I've also been told it's quite a good fishing pet. So I don't I'm not spending a lot of money on that. But if you have the money or want to, then yeah, yeah, I suggest you do it. Okay, so now I will show you other methods besides uh, minions to gather XP. So um uh, one very simple way would be to go through here with the with the pet and just mine all of this. It can also give you a rock pet or upgrade the rock pet if you already have it because these ores do count towards that milestone. So doing this gives a good amount of XP. Another way is this is this large contraption right here. So if you don't have a legendary silverfish, then you'd want to drink haste. Three potions have a efficiency five uh, golden pickaxe or a stonk with efficiency six. Um, and then I I put these down here so it, there's less like wavering when I'm tilting back and forth. But this is a this is a way to get XP. If you want, you could also have a speed potion or use the miner's outfit. I I don't suggest it because haste three is what you need. But um here I'll, I'll demonstrate. So you stare straight up and then just slide slightly back and forth. And as you can see, I'm getting plus 1.4 mining with every block that's broken. It's not going up super fast, 
but you also have to think about how you are making money whilst doing this with the cobble one very easy way to do that is to have your your personal compactor have enchanted cobblestone in it and then as it goes into your inventory it'll just compress and you can just keep going and going and going how this works is that there's lava it's just a giant cobblestone generator i do suggest having obsidian on most places if not the whole thing because the haste 3 makes it so fast breaking through any other block um but yeah, basically just, you can visit my island to check it out later. I believe I have it public. Um, but you'd want to put water source blocks here. And then have it fall down to one block below. Here, well, I'll explain this better. The lava you want just going straight down. So here. The water you'd want next to signs at head height. And then the lava would end right there can see it right there and then it'll keep regenerating and every once in a while there is a blip which is what I'm gonna call it um, over there these if you break this for a while I don't know why but it uh, chunks of it might glitch and cause you to lose more if if that happens I suggest just doing this uh, just coming up here and filling it in and that'll fix it uh, at least for a while. So yeah, this is this is one method. You can't AFK it though, because it is it is uh I don't even know if it's I'm assuming it's bannable, but it's it's against the rules to AFK um, skill XP. Even though I'm not AFKing, obviously, but if I just hold down W and hold down left click, you can see that's giving XP now. But after a while, it won't. Let's see. You can no longer hear the dings. It's no longer giving XP, but I am still getting cobblestone. So that's the problem. And I'm not AFK because I'm currently at my keyboard talking to you. But if you're like, you can sit here doing this, just going straight forward, and as long as you're at your keyboard and mouse, you're fine. It's like you could be watching YouTube on your second monitor or something, and like slightly wiggle it every once in a while to get some XP just not actually looking, but as long as you're at your keyboard, it does not matter. But um, this is also a good way to grind cobblestone for personal compactors or super compactors. Okay, we'll switch to uh, enchanting, because that one's quite easy. So here's my little enchanting setup. You're going to want to get it, here, I'll, I'll just quickly demonstrate. So I suggest having a row of books. If you have, like, let's say a stack of Grand XP bottles or ti the Titanic ones, wait, I need to get a Guardian app. Then I su here's a decent strategy. I'll, I'll leave those in my inventory for now. You'll want to do this. Then stand here. I already have enough levels, so we're just going to do that. Exit out, and then you would keep repeating that. As so. Now I don't have a lot at the moment, because I'm not spending money. Uh, like I said, you could if you really wanted to spend money, and then the hoppers will feed to this chest. You can have more than just one chest, obviously. But I only have one, and then I usually empty it every once in a while with bad enchants, uh, which I have not done recently. But that will also level up your guardian, which is a bare minimum mage pet in dungeons. So if you want to train one of these because you can't afford a good cheap pet or anything, then I did, you could do that as well. Okay, we'll switch to uh, farming. So, I mainly farm sugarcane, even though it doesn't give a ton of XP mainly because uh, it uh, works well with a alchemy XP, which I am training as well. So, in my personal compactor, I'll, I'll just go through this row real quick. 
To get the XP, you gotta go up and down. Normally I would be wearing young armor, but these rows are too short to, uh, to correctly demonstrate it with that much speed. So you'd want to do that, and then having the personal compactor go to uh, Enchanted Sugar is also helpful. Um, and then naturally having the rabbit pet out, or let's say you were training your uh, legendary elephant or something. I only have a rare one, but just for an example. Then you could have that out, but this one boosts XP, and as you can see it gives a bit of speed as well. Um, and then also having a farming XP boost of any kind on this is, is quite useful because naturally you're going to be using it to gather farming XP. And then pumpkins. Here, I'll, I'll show you real quick. Pumpkins give 6.4 with my pet and 5.4 without. While if you look at these, 2.8 XP with the pet. 2.4 without. So it's much less for sugarcane, so it's not nearly as efficient, but it is better if you're also grinding alchemy XP. So what I would suggest is having a decent sized pumpkin farm, much larger than mine. Farming that um, for XP, get to a decent level, and then farm sugarcane for alchemy as well, unless you want to spend money on uh, alchemy. Okay, now I'll switch right into alchemy. So here I have everything I would need for uh, brewing potions. I have four rows of eight brewing stands to make exactly 32, which if you look, if I take everything else out of my inventory, except for three things and, and including the menu, I have exactly 32 slots because 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So I could grind through it quite fast. I will show you a basic example with only a couple rows. I also suggest having any sort of alchemy pet. If you're healer, have your jellyfish. If you're mage, have your sheep. Um, if, you're, if you want longer duration, parrot. Um, if you don't have an alchemy pet that you care about, you could hold out a different one. But um, I do suggest having an alchemy pet just because how much they're affected by this XP. Especially with a 10% pet XP boost. So you would go through, shift clicking all of them in, then you'd go back here, I only have 4, but with 32 you would put 1 in each inventory, open inventory slot, and then you would shift click through all of them, and then the 32 is just enough, so that once you get to the end here, you can cycle back, grab the next ingredient, in this case it's enchanted sugar, um, and it would be completed by the time you got there. So there's no delay. Of course there is one here because I'm only doing four. And then putting any sort of glowstone or redstone on these potions does not change the amount of XP you get. It will only increase the level and duration if you're going to use these potions. But keep in mind these are speed potions, so I suggest making a couple double chests worth, <laughs> not not really, like a double chest worth of actually decent tiered ones if you ever need them. But um, you do not actually have to level these up in any way. And then here, 360 alchemy XP per potion, so going through this about once gives you close to 40k. I don't remember the exact number, but it's around there. So what you could do is go through this a bunch of times, or if you have a large enough farm, turn enchanted sugar into enchanted sugar cane. Each um, singular brewing stand then with the enchanted sugar cane gives about 45k XP, which is a lot, but if you think about it, having you could have gone through this five times with the enchanted sugar, um, so you are losing out on a lot of possible XP. It's much faster, so what I suggest doing is going through it with the Just Enchanted Sugar until you're at a decent level, like 25 or so, and then you can start going with the uh, Enchanted Sugar Cane for efficiency. 
but um, if if you're want if you're willing to spend money on this, the most XP you could possibly get is from Enchanted Blaze Rod. They are quite expensive, but you get, I believe, I believe you get around 75k total XP from one brewing stand. Uh, the most cost efficient is Enchanted Melons, which would result in tier three healing potions. Um, they are, it's the cheapest method, but it gives slightly less XP than uh, speed. So if you are, if you want to do, if you want to spend a good amount of money on alchemy to either level up a pet or get alchemy XP, then I do suggest either grinding for it with a large sugarcane farm or um, buying enchanted sugarcane off of bazaar. If you're willing to put a ton of money into it, then you could buy Enchanted Blaze Rods. Okay. Next, we will go over Foraging XP. So I suggest having uh, Efficiency 5 Golden Axe with Telekinesis, or an Efficiency 5 Tree Capitator, which is pretty much this, if you combine the Golden Axe, which is extremely fast, with the Jungle Axe which breaks multiple logs at a time as a chain reaction and this one's just a much more powerful version I, I use a golden axe because I'm not spending money other than on a tree capitator and then just for an example you would use a speed set and you would do this oh I don't have, I don't have haste here for, for an example I'll, I'll use this you would get haste but um, if you don't care about the XP as much, then you could simply skip over the... Or if you have a low level loss slot, you could skip over the um, XP boost for the free um, for the free permanent haste 3, which is what I usually do. Um, but this is a fairly efficient way to do this. I think you can get away with haste 2 potions if you have full efficiency 5 on your golden axe. So keep that in mind. But um, there was somebody over here using a tree capitator. I, I want to try to see that real quick. Here. See, it breaks the vast majority of the tree. He also has a legendary ass slot. Okay, and then we'll do fishing and then combat to cap it off. So, where I suggest going for... Um, well, there's two spots. There's two two spots. One would be traveling to the end, especially if you have a warp to the dragon's den, and then teleporting over here to the park. I, I do suggest using a Y set because it is quite far, um, and then fishing here at this little pond. So sitting here for a while, cast, do to do, do, bait. Pulling out your fishing pet, catch whatever, and then you fish here for a while, preferably in a set. I use angler uh, because I, I again don't fish all that often, um, so I have very basic stuff. But um, you'd want to chill here, chill here, and then let's say there was a drag fight going on, you'd switch to this. Make sure you have your bow out. I don't, I don't really use a bow all that often, so I don't. And then you would do slash warp dragon or whatever the command is. I don't actually have it. Like, let's say you were, you're were seeing eyes get placed. Let's say it's four out of eight eyes, and you're like, oh, better stop fishing. And then you can switch to your uh, skeleton pet. I'm assuming you have one because it's quite good for drag fights. And you want to go over here. Actually, you'd probably won't be in wise until you got back. If you, this is if you didn't have the warp. You could switch, drop all the way down, lose half of your health in the process. This also has feather falling fine. So yeah, don't drop down there if you don't have feather falling. Now that you have your skeleton and stuff, you can you can shoot it. Or if you, or if you're a magic user, watch your speep, shoot it. You get it. 
so that would be good for fishing. The other option would be the classic one that most people use, going to Blazing Fortress, or if you have a portal to spiders, then just going there. But uh, since I don't, I just use the Blazing Fortress one, and then you run over here, straight across, ignoring the what is he? The the people in in not full dragon armor. And then you're gonna want to teleport back to the hub island. Lose all of your mana in the process. And then run or teleport if you still have the mana, but I like to regen mana at this point. Uh, so that when I switch to whatever set, I actually have some mana in case a good sea creature spawns. Um, here there's nobody, but usually there's one or two other people especially if there's a fishing festival. There is going to be a lot of people here. And then I have a decent amount of mana, about a thousand. So now I would switch to my angler set, start fishing. And you're usually fairly secluded here. Like I, I got lucky and there's nobody here at all. So nobody to steal my sea creatures. Got a squode, so that's a decent example. So the here's another thing, using bait. During the fishing festival, obviously shark bait, but I'm outside, you can use fish bait, whale bait, or spiked bait. Those are the main ones that I suggest. I prefer fish bait, but if you have the money, you could use whale bait if you wanted, because it, it's pretty much a mixture of all of them. So that, that one's fairly good. Last but not least, we've got combat. So what I suggest doing here, having your wolf pet out, and then starting a slayer while once you get to full mana make sure you're at full mana so i'm just going to start a tier one just as an example um if you were fighting tier fours i would suggest using this set uh unless you had like a reaper scythe or revenant Fabian or, or one of those weapons then you could probably get away with this set but um since i just use pigman and a wolf pet i i use this set much more and then you would go around killing them but uh for this case since it's tier one i'll use see already spawned here and then one tapped you don't get a lot of rev flash but the boss gives decent xp well combat xp and you don't really lose money doing it i can't start a tier two here i'll, I'll try to show that again so each of these with my level 56 wolf pet gives 51.6 combat, which is enough to spawn it in 3. That gave 80.6. I believe the tier 4s give around 1000 when using this pet, so I do actually suggest doing that, especially if Aatrox is mayor. Like, I grinded these a lot and leveled up combat. I got 200k combat XP in about 2 hours. Maybe one and a half with a, the AA trucks thing. And I didn't lose a ton of money, actually. Um, another thing you do is just go around in full young or something similar. Just stabbing them. Uh, because the wolf does give a bit of uh, speed as well. Uh, secondary option would be to do this. To use a magic weapon that you know can kill them. And then just go around spamming it. This is also good for the mini bosses that will spawn at the higher tiers. Um, it will make sure that you're far enough away that you can just snipe them or not fight them at all if you want. But yeah, those are a couple strategies. If you are not looking to get revs or fight zombies, then you could go to uh, the end as well and kill a bunch of those mobs which also work, but they also have much more health, so it might be more difficult to one-tap them with magic weapons if you want to do that strat. Um, but another thing that's nice about these zombies is that they give a lot of enchanting XP. As you see, I just got a level from level 48 to 49. So what I usually do is work these in tandem. I will do, I think, level 2 um, revs, because 
that you definitely won't lose money. I would also be in a private lobby, obviously. Since I'm not actually grinding them, I, I don't care. Um, so you'd go around doing this, and then once you hit level 52, or if you really want to wait until 104, that's fine. Uh, another thing, I do suggest having the experience artifact for this. Um, yeah, let's, so let's say you got to level 104, and you're like, alright, this is, this is good enough. Uh, you pull out your guardian to get the extra mana. War of home. You would go to your setup. Pull out a book or two. I'm only going to do one because I'm level 52. Then you do that. Get your XP. And then keep grinding. It does take a while, but it is a very easy way to get both without spending anything. Um, so I do suggest doing that. But yeah, there's some strategies for uh, grinding uh, XP. And I will detail in the upcoming videos what skills are useful, especially pertaining to, uh, let's say, your dungeon class, um, so that you will know what to specifically grind and, and gloss over. See so ya, yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the coming weeks.